Uh, thank you very much for watching the weekly press conference regarding COVID-19. And I will start by the numbers in Oman. The numbers which will be published today, we had 778 cases registered yesterday in the Sultanate of Oman, 265 Omanis, 513 uh, from our colleagues, the expatriates. The total number of cases in Oman up till this morning, 14,316. Unfortunately, those who passed or died from this disease, 67. Any death is a tragedy. Any death is very sad. They leave behind the loved ones. Most of them, they, did, they do have or they did have chronic diseases, which unfortunately we know that they impose extra risk uh, for, for death. And some of them, unfortunately, also, they did not attend uh, for health, or they didn't seek health, uh, the healthcare institution early enough. So I'm urging everybody who does have any symptoms, particularly shortness of breath, to go to any healthcare facilities, whether private or government. And I would repeat something we said several times, nobody, will be asked to pay for their treatment for this disease, regardless of their nationality, their immigration status, their work. We said it previously, they will not be asked to pay, and I am repeating it here. And this is a message for the international organization, which they started questioning what's been happening in the GCC countries or the expatriates. I'm assuring everybody that the treatment and the tests are not, the, the cost is not paid by the individuals and will never allow that. So please, before you write anything about the policies in Sultan of Oman, or for that matter, our neighboring countries, but I'm talking about Oman, you need to have the courage to look for the information from the uh, accurate sources. Uh, other numbers I would like to uh, mention to uh, our viewers. The number of patients who are admitted since we had the first case in Oman is 799. And the total number of patients admitted to our intensive care units in the country up till this morning, 120. Currently, we have 226 patients, 58 of them, unfortunately, in the intensive care unit. As you've noted, over the last 10 days, minus plus, the number of cases, unfortunately, in the rise. It fluctuates, and the highest number we had was 1,014 cases in one day. I've mentioned uh, in previous occasion the reason for that. One of them, probably the natural history of this disease. The other, the active surveillance, i.e. we are testing everybody with symptoms and we look for them. Thirdly, unfortunately, in the second half of the holy month of Ramadan, and during the Eid holiday, uh, there are indications that the physical distancing was not as good as, we didn't adhere as well as we did before. So I'm urging everybody to continue, please, physical distancing, to continue the healthy practices, washing hands regularly with water and soap or using sanitizers, as you've heard, uh, government offices, the employee uh, went back, minimum 50%. Also, we are opening more businesses, and this itself imposes risk of increasing cases. But also, we realize that life has to go on, and, has, and as His Majesty directed and ordered that we need to start living with this disease, with the precautions that will minimize the risk. But in all countries, decisions are taken depending on their social, economic, and other uh, factors. And Oman is not different. And I can say that up till now, and thanks to your uh, being part of, of, of preventing this disease by staying at home, by uh, uh, doing what we said, the, clear, the, the healthy practices, the number of cases in Oman, yes, they are high, but they are not alarming. But we are worried. We are still worried that the cases may go higher. The percentage of patients who needed admission in Oman 
is less than 7% uh, of those who are diagnosed. Worldwide, it's much higher. And I think there might be some scientific explanation to that. Also, the death rate, even though, sadly, we lost 67 individuals in Oman, but the death rate up till this morning did not exceed 0.5% of those who are diagnosed. While worldwide, it's between 3 and 12%, and some figures are higher. We have also reasons for that, probably because our population are younger. Also, luckily, our healthcare facilities, and here I'm, I have to register my thank, and I'm grateful to all those who are working in the healthcare sector, whether the private or the government sector. Without them, our condition would have been much worse. These are the soldiers of this battle. This is a war with an enemy we can't see. This is a war which, unfortunately, up till now, the only way to defeat, to defeat this virus is by physical distancing, by washing hands, by staying at home if you have symptoms, by wearing the mask if you are outside, whether it's crowded places or not, in closed places. We need to adhere to these regulations. Together, hopefully, we'll get out of this pandemic with minimum damage. And this is what all countries aim for. Nobody knows when this virus is going to go away. Nobody knows for certain as yet when are we going to get vaccine, if any, and I hope there will be. Nobody knows as yet when we'll have a specific treatment for this virus. I will just need to repeat one thing, that treatment for everybody in Oman is taken care of and nobody was asked and nobody will be asked to pay for the treatment from their pocket. So this is a message I hope it will be heard loudly and clearly by organizations that claim they are looking after the welfare of people everywhere. Come, see what we are doing, and then write about facts. Not rumors, not what you imagine, but what you see. Thank you very much again. Keep your social distance, stay safe, and thank you for watching.